Hello and welcome to today's webinar presented by Duluball Software. Today we'll be working in our finite element analysis and design software, RFEM. The title for today's webinar is RFM Webinar 3, Integration with BIM Workflows. This is the third and final webinar of a three-part series geared to giving users an insight to RFM, starting with the more basic features, moving on to the advanced, and finally ending, ending with BIM integration. My colleague Walter Russer will be your presenter today. He's the Sales Director and Customer Support Engineer, and he is located in Tiefenbach, Germany. My name is Amy Heilig. I'll be your moderator answering any questions you may have. I'm the CEO of the U.S. office. I'm also a technical support and sales engineer, and we are located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If the control panel does seem to get in your way of the presentation when you logged into the GoToMeeting, feel free to show or hide that with the orange arrow up at the top. We always want to encourage everyone to ask questions throughout the webinar. You can use this same dialog box to do so. If by chance we don't get to all the questions, I'll certainly send you a follow-up email afterwards. And with that said, I will turn it over to my colleague, Walter. Okay, thanks Amy for um, the introduction. Hello from my end too and um, the next yeah, close to an hour I'll talk about the beam integration of RFAM with um, other various um, CAD applications such as Revit but also Tecla and if we got time also a little bit about uh, Bentley, the ISM interface. Before we step into the software, i will like to talk a little bit about the differences between the file-based exchange and the direct links, and I want to explain a little bit of background information about the physical and the analytical model. Then uh, we'll dip into exchange scenarios, show the round-trip design, and during this I'm sure you will get a lot of tips and tricks um, how to exchange data with Global RFAM. The file-based exchange um, is also the same as the direct interfaces come all with RFAM automatically. Um, when we use a file-based exchange, however, we have to translate more or less the data that we have in RFAM or in the CAD software into a standardized format. Um, depending on the specification, um, what entities and what kind of objects these formats provide, we may or may not be able to write uh, our data into these, uh, into these files. Um, IFC, for example, has uh, no way to write for us, for example, nonlinear supports or uh, information about uh, load generation standards, a lot of information we just have in our software. So if this specification or the standard format does not provide a container for it, it's hard for us to, to write it there. Um, on the other hand, um, it's an easy, easy thing because we can just write a text file. Uh, it does not require any installed applications. Um, it's a non-proprietary uh, format. That means it should more or less work with all other applications. Um, as good or not good, they can read and write those formats. And these advantage is that applications do not really talk directly to each other. Typical candidates for DXF, uh, for uh, text file base uh, exchange is uh, DXF or IFC. And if you go to file export in our software, you find all those formats that we support, such as SIS2, SDNF, uh, or newly we implemented also the direct uh, export of a start of a advanced steel file SMLX. So if you use that software, there are some new options. Okay, uh, the direct interfaces, on the other hand, uh, avoid all these complications. Uh, we can look what does the other software provide, which objects are there, can we use it, can we directly address it. So we talk to this other software using the so-called APIs, application programming interfaces, 
um, and we link um, those programs directly. So we don't have to go through a like format specification and we can just get and read and write what we find in the uh, corresponding applications. Um, however, this uh, technology requires a direct uh, a, uh, installed application. That means uh, both applications have to be on the same computer. And um, I would like to highlight that we don't need a license for necessarily a license for all of those uh, software. Um, for example, in our case, we can install a trial license which um, runs out and gets into a demo license, but we still can use it to write a file from our direct interfaces and store it as a ORFM file and then this ORFM file can be given to a structural engineer that has a full version to work with it. So the big advantage is we are much more free what we can do, what we can write. Uh, uh, we uh, can link really live uh, the applications seamlessly uh, directly to each other. Yeah? So uh, direct interfaces we have currently to Tecla structures, to Revit structures, those are the most important applications with direct interfaces. Okay, then yeah, next topic I'd like to explain is the difference between the physical and the analytical model. We have to understand these are two different models and when I look at the pictures on the right side, there is a steel connection and this is a, you can say this is a physical model that has bolts, end plates, uh, cross sections, haunch, uh, haunch section stiffeners. Um, but how do I put in my structural lines in there, my center lines, my model, my stick model that I would typically make in a structural software for this? It can be done maybe this way, so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six members, four nodes, or it can be done maybe with a uh, numerical transformation of the eccentricity, so some software has um, eccentric links that can be used and um, they don't need actually a, a separate member to connect um, uh, those gaps here, or in a simplified model we can have just ignore this uh, eccentric horn here and just have a straight member. So there's there's different ways how we can do it and obviously it needs a little bit of the help of the engineer to decide how they want to uh, build that model. Um, and the second thing is uh, typically when we have in a um, CAD application or in a BIM software we have a volumetric uh, view and um, it means that either boundary surfaces define a solid um, and we, we get the real geometry of this uh, structure while in a in an analytical um, software we typically would describe this beam as a with a node of beginning node ending and with a cross section that define the stiffness and uh, um, also the resistance of, of this uh, structure. You know, um, what we see below here is what we would also get in the so-called IFC coordination view. So we get a volumetric model and this above would be the IFC structural analysis view. And these are two different models um, and not necessarily IFC takes care of uh, the transition from one model to the other one. So this has to be done either in the in the BIM software or then afterwards in the structural analysis software. Um, another variant of the solid can be a so-called swept solid where we start with a section area that is extruded along a line uh, which defines then the, the longitudinal uh, extension of a member which helps us if we have this swept solid representation because we can automatically or more or less automatically find out where is beginning and ending and if we have a little bit information about the cross section we can import this more or less um, seamlessly. Yeah and with this uh, we would step right into the 
a live demonstration. Um, yeah, um, I will then go open the software and explain a little bit uh, what are the different scenarios and I will also explain the analytical models in the different software that we look at today. Okay, let me see. I start with Autodesk Revit 2018, which is the current version of Autodesk. So that has been just released in May. So we updated our interface. We are part of the Autodesk Developer Network for many years. And uh, we typically get those pre-release versions so can, we can build the interface um, even before there's an official release and uh, we can test it out. And once the full releases are there, we can um, then provide uh, interfaces in short time. Um, I have a variety of models I would like to show today. And I start with a quite simple one, which is called OS Webinar Beam Simple. Um, because I think it easily allows us to uh, understand how these procedures work and what's in those Revit models and also then later in the Tekla models. Um, what we see here is the physical model, so it's the real model that you would build and beside this there is also the analytical model that can be shown inside um, Revit structure or Revit um, and um, this model is uh, more or less uh, built with the help of the software and the user can modify it and apply it as he likes it and change the, the geometry of this of this model. For example, if you look at this beam, in this beam uh, you can enable or disable the analytical model. If you do so then the um, analytical model disappears. Yeah, it's gone, the node is gone. Yeah, and if I enable it again, it will be created and it inserts the stick model. Yeah. Um, I can also influence uh, where this uh, stick model will be placed. Uh, when I click on this member, I can look at the analytical beam properties and here I can um, influence the analytical alignment. Now it's set to auto detect but I can also say project or into projection and then at the start and at the end I can bind it to the center of the element. Yeah, you can see how this line moves down and now if I do this at the other end then you can see also the node here is created and it moves downward. Um, you have also a analyze menu here where it gives uh, more options. For example, you have the option to adjust um, the nodes. When you click there, you can see you have drag and drop options. You can insert analytical links. You can adjust walls. Um, there is there are some ways how to model this analytical model inside uh, Autodesk Revit. Um, next to this there is a certain type of boundary conditions, uh, fixed, pinned, um, roller, user and they are also displayed here uh, in this model. We have loads, load cases, load combinations. Um, there are some possibilities like with line and area loads, hosted point loads, hosted line loads, but uh, it's for our for our feeling what we are used to have in RFAM, it's it's much less than what RFAM would would offer. So um, for you, you have to decide yourself where you enter your loads, whether you do this in Revit or where you do this then in RFAM, where you have all these uh, tools to generate loads and to create load combinations. In this model we have a five load cases all together. We have no load combinations. It's kind of basic here how you can enter and create those combinations. Um, I would like to do this in RFAM if, if I if I want to combinate uh, com make combinations in RFAM I think it's much more easy. We'll see this later. Okay, 
Let's see what happens when we start the interface to RFAM. So we have a couple of linear loads, a couple of nodal loads. We have the analytical model, we have supports. In some of the analytical model, like here on this diagonal, we have also uh, additional parameters. Uh, here it said member type tension. This parameter is a user-defined parameter that we created in our interface. Uh, when we install our fam on top of Revit, then the interface will be automatically installed and you have it available for use. So this comes with RFM at no extra cost. Every RFM user has it. The interface is controlled by three buttons mainly, export, import, export, calculation, import, which is like a start of a workflow where we export the model, run the calculation and import some results. Also, we have the blue ball parameter. And these are the parameters I was just talking about, member type tension, member type truss, and here's also a way how we can match a material databases and cross-section databases. Uh, we just assign different parameters to the materials and the cross-sections. These are text parameters that identify the different materials and sections from the library of in the global software. Um, typically, uh, you work with families in Revit, and if the families are not named according to the global standard, then you can match it using those uh, parameters. And there's a couple more which I don't uh, want to go into details now. Um, yeah, I have here the families loaded. Pretty much I, all of the W sections. Um, this I suggest that you set up in a template what you typically use and use this template and then um, you have usually no problems with conversion of, of cross sections. And there is more uh, parametric uh, possibilities uh, that can be done um, in, in cross section mapping files for example. Okay, but let's look at the first attempt and we'll export this model. So, um, these three buttons are for RFM and these three buttons are for RSTOP, which is the same interface. RSTOP is our second program that uh, includes only members, uh, no surfaces, no uh, solids. It's a, it's a little bit lighter version of RFM if you want to say so. I have RFM open here in the background, but no, no model is open. Yeah? So, I start the export and the dialog opens which allows me to control certain things. I can create a new structure in RFAM, I can override an existing one, I can update an existing one. Since I have not a new one open, I create a new one. Here is the option, if I don't have any license, I can export to a file. I need an installed version, demo version, trial version, but no license. And I can create an RFAM file that I can give to an RFAM user with a full license. I can select um, certain objects. I don't have to export all the model. I can export just a level. I can export beam, column, whatever. I can export visible objects and I can export only members or surfaces. Um, I just leave out all the definition of uh, hinges or supports in Revit because if, if the Revit engineer didn't do exactly what I want him to do, um, then for me it's easier just to ignore everything and just get the plane geometry and then work with it in our frame. You can do so, you don't have to. Okay, most important here is also this cross-section global parameter to use. Yeah? Uh, material name from global parameter, I have set that up, I can show later where that is. Structural analysis, um, we apply the structural data, we apply the loads, self-weight we assign in the load case one, that load, and we'll create, or if we would have some, we'll create some load combinations. Also, I can convert isolated foundations and wall foundations to simple supports. That will show also in a different example later. When I start the export, I get a little history that is written down, a little dialogue. I have a log file that helps me to review what happened. I get the IDs here, I can search for IDs, 
and in case of problems this is helpful for for our support huh? okay then um, yeah close this I open our fam and you can see our fam has already the model open we can see that there are the cross sections we can see them in the table as they were assigned in Revit. Revit had this name and the cross section here was transferred correctly into the RFAM library uh, nomenclature so we have the correct uh, section here that has all the right parameters. Also here the one inch cross section was transferred into a round bar one by AISC. So when I look at the materials also steel ASDM was transferred to steel and the AISC um, material and same to ASDM. So with this I can in the load case, loads are also here, I can run, I can see also here there's there's some some hinges that have been defined, uh, there's the supports and also this parameter tension only was transferred also correctly to this tension bar and the other one didn't have the parameter so that's a beam. Yeah? So with this I can start my analysis, just a basic low case with self-weight and we'll see we get results, we get bending moments, uh, we get support reactions so without doing anything I was able to analyze uh, this simple model. Also I'd like to point out that here this column is still one part. The beam connects here along the column but since the node is exactly on the center line it is possible to mesh it and it will automatically connect and um, get correct results. So this is something that RFM can do which is um, not so necessarily possible in other programs. What I forgot to point out we have also so-called rigid coupling. Um, in the Revit model if there is some eccentricity it's possible that we work with analytic links. Uh, you can allow or not allow analytic links if you uh, modify the analytical model you can uh, allow them here if you do not allow them then the analytical links disappear if you allow them they are built in automatically yeah? good um, so this is the easy part now what happens if we deal with with changes when we work with with changes uh, we can either have changes in Revit or we can have changes in uh, RFAM. So let's start with the Revit part. For example I'm gonna copy this beam over and uh, make a change here for example let's say horizontally for a foot. Yeah? What happens? We'll automatically get a new analytical model because it's enabled. Yeah? Um, the software automatically finds the node on the on the line and on the other side as well. So this doesn't look too good to me so I'm gonna change my analytical model again in Revit for this first beam and I'll set back the start alignment and the end alignment to auto detect and you see uh, it is aligned on the top. Yeah. Typically beams are placed in that way that uh, the C justification is top that means the insertion line is on top and the beam expands to, the, to below. Okay, so there's one change. How to get this over to RFM? Same procedure, export model. This time I update the existing structure and I'd like to point out the first uh, tool here. We have to check here, update objects to partial view. 
So everything which is not found in our fan model will get assigned a certain visibility. When I start to do this, it goes quite quick. And I open our fan and we'll see here. It's better to see when you have the rendered view. Uh, there is two beams highlighted. In the views here, you see there is a visibility created that's called Revit update with date and time. If you want to see only this, you select it here. If you want to cancel the visibility, you see everything. At any later time, you want to see what happened here. At that time, you'll see this. Yeah? So you have a way, some simple way how to track this. Now I'm going to do the other way. I'm going to change something in in, Rev, in our fam and bring it back to Revit. How to track those changes? One way could be I create a new visibility. I can do it down here. I'll group it under the other Revit update and I can call it, for example, phase one. Okay. And the important thing is that you check here, add new objects into visibility, phase one. Yeah? So everything which I add now into the RFAM model will go into this visibility and I can um, find it later on also I can address it and I can um, match my export to Revit according this uh, visibility. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this beam over here for example with the move copy in RFM. Maybe okay half is eight foot let's say four foot okay three copies okay and we have now three more beams and the new beams should be in this visibility one so if I check this visibility phase one you'll see only those beams huh? okay um, maybe I do another change in the loading Okay, change the size of the loading. Um, yeah, and also I can create a new cross section. I want to have a smaller cross section, create a new one. It was a W14, so we'll take a W10 maybe. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I made a couple of changes and I want to update uh, those changes. Yeah. Now I can either put all those changes if 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 they are not if they're not automatically in there, I can also manually influence this. I can say, okay, this change, this selected beam should be assigned into phase one, and I say here equals redefine. Yeah, everything selected will be added. Yeah. And now if I activate this visibility, then I have only this. Yeah. So um, I can now update this, either select it, create a new view in, in Revit, make a duplicate view. Yeah. I can rename it to anything, update one. Okay, um, and in this view, in this view, I can basically just hide everything, elements. Yeah. And if I import now, and I go back, yeah, I have selected. If I import now into Revit, my model, only selected objects. Um, then I can apply loads, so I can not apply loads, so I can yes, I can apply loads. I can start the import. Revit now converts my cross sections, goes through all the loaded libraries and converts um, the cross section naming. 
and this can take a few seconds depending on how many libraries you have written, how many families you have loaded. And then you see here, my new objects are here, yeah? update one. If I go back to the complete analytical model, everything is there. Yeah? So um, also uh, the white flange um, beam is changed and uh, we have here now the justification is not yet um, set up. Um, you can, um, because we don't know how you want to have it uh, um, justified in, in Revit, we'll put it to center, but with a few clicks you can change them to top. Note that here we didn't modify it because it was modified before in Revit, so we just changed the cross section. Yeah? Okay, so this is one way how we can modify and play with the with the different models uh, in Revit and in RFM. And also uh, important is that all those things are made in such way that uh, the model still is possible to analyze. So there is no, no problems. The, the software links to the nodes when I copy a move. And uh, of course, uh, they, there has to be exact modeling, but uh, then it automatically measures those, those nodes. Yeah? OK, this was the first model. Next, we go a little bit uh, further into the more complicated model, I would say. I'll close this model here and I'll save it on the, my desktop, maybe. Okay, and the next will be, I close this model, close this view. Next will be this model here, which is a little bit more complex, but not too complicated. It has now also surfaces, openings. It has also uh, isolated supports. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going a step ahead. I'm going to show you with the, uh, what I can do with the isolated foundation. And uh, I'm going to show you also in our fam how we can use generators for loads and structure to model uh, the software and then update everything back model to, to modify the model and then update it back to Revit. I think it is important to see that so we understand that it's important to to decide where you do the combinations and uh, and the model at the load generation. Okay, uh, RFM is the model is closed. We'll go to Revit and we'll export the model. We'll export the model. Uh, again, create a new structure, complete model. I don't have any updates. I'll also use the uh, self-weight. And the first model I'm going to do is I'm creating isolated foundations uh, to surface and elastic foundations and the same with the wall foundations. Yeah. I start the export, creating a new model and you see it's here. What happened now is that for each foundation I get a surface with an elastic foundation. This is a simplified model of this isolated foundation. Yeah. So I can work then with the with the elasticity of that support. We have options to use the module soil in where you can uh, have uh, simulate the soil structure interaction and so on. Yeah? Okay, if I don't do this, I go back to Revit and I'll make the export again, but with the structural setting as they were default, nodal support into line support. Yeah? Start the export, everything is updated and the elastic, yeah, the elastic is still there because I forgot to do one thing, because I forgot to 
remove the absent objects, which are those ones. This setting is important because if you work with partial models, uh, you don't want to you don't want to remove the parts of the objects that you're not exporting currently. So I do this again, and I have to update one more time, and then I hope everything is okay. Um, so now the foundations are removed because they are not found anymore and will can work with simple line support and nodal support. Yeah. Again, we have dead load in the first load case. And what I would, to, would like to point out now is what we have in our frame, what's not in Revit, we can assign a standard, for example, ASC 710 uh, for loads and load combinations. And I can create those combinations automatically. Yeah. I click OK. And then in the load case table, we have the action categories, dead, wind, snow. We have actions, dead, wind, snow. We can define the combinations expressions. We get the combinations based on action combinations and the final load combinations with the load factors. Everything just with a few clicks and everything will be updated as soon as we enter a new load case. So this is, I think, more down to earth and more, more accurate and more easy to handle than you would do it in, in Revit for now. Maybe in future Revit has some other options and then we can also import those. So next is we'll deal with some loading. Let's see if we can analyze this at all. Uh, maybe at this stage it's, yeah, it is possible. We have here um, deformations. So it seems that the model uh, it's, is correct that we imported. But I'm going to work now a little bit uh, on this first attempt of this building and we'll create some wind loads and snow loads. I'll um, select the members by material, so members are all in steel, and I hide everything which is not selected. So I have the plain steel hall basically here. I'm going to apply now, first of all, wind loads. I don't want to do a complete design here because I think that's covered in other webinars. Uh, today we will want to focus a little bit more on this BIM workflow and what is good to do where and why. So I create wind loads, vertical walls and roof according to AIC. You have here um, automatically um, access to exposure category if it's enclosed or a partially enclosed building. Uh, you have to assign the height of the uh, structure, you can measure it from here to here. Um, you have to assign the base geometry, the roof geometry, and you can assign also the members which are um, parallel to a certain members. You can just pick here this one, if it's loaded or not loaded, and the load will then be only distributed on the highlighted uh, columns and beams. Yeah. There is also a little explanatory picture that allows you to understand this dialogue a little bit better. I'm creating now just the wind direction uh, perpendicular to the surface AB. In low case 2, I can do uh, different wind directions at the same generation process. Yeah. I'll click OK and the results are given in some statistics. Um, will have then the wall pressure leeward and windward and so on. You can check what's really the basis of this uh, load generation. Then we can uh, display the generated load into individual uh, uh, line loads. And also if you don't like to have, if you don't like what the software did, you can disconnect the generated loads and you can then delete or change or modify any load you like. Because here is a building, uh, maybe you want to change this. You see in principle how this load generation works and something like this we don't see in Revit, for example. Um, next will be the snow load. 
The snow load can be done also with a snow load generator. Um, I briefly open it here. You have the map, for example, for USA. You can click to the location. You get um, the basic ground snow load for this location. And in the same way, you have to define the, the base geometry or the roof geometry and which members you want to load, which load case it goes to. It automatically finds load case category snow. You click OK and you have then the, the loads here in your structure. With this, we can step to the combinations and analyze everything. I do not do this now for um, the surfaces. Uh, there are surface loads, line loads, member loads, uh, all you can think of. Um, but I think you have seen the principle how we can generate those things. And one thing I'm going to show also is the load case manager where we have access to all combinations and we can say we want this in the first attempt a geometrical linear analysis. All these settings about the solvers, about um, what kind of theory we use, uh, stiffness reductions, everything that's all done in RFAM. So for me, when I have to do a lot of things in RFAM, then as just uh, I might just do everything as well, uh, including the according the loads, also the loads, including the loads and combinations in there as well. So, okay, once I have this, I can run my analysis, um, go there and get my uh, analysis done, combinations done, uh, yeah, and I get also deformations and internal forces. Not enough, uh, as you can see, deflections here are kind of, kind of little crazy. Um, I like to change my model. Um, I show you also another option we have in RFAM, um, how to model things. I select one frame, press Ctrl C for copy, create a new model. Okay. And press Ctrl V for insert. I have taken the frame out and put into a new model. Now I can create, for example, a truss. Uh, I can pick the left outer node, the right outer node. I can select the type of truss I'd like to have. I select the total height, total length, uh, distance from the first span. I can assign the cross sections. I say I want to have beam uh, members everywhere. I click OK, and I have my truss created. In this first approach, I don't want to have any members, any member hinges. I delete them. I can select my truss, Control C, go back to Revit, um, sorry, to RFM, to the other model, and I press Control V and it will insert my truss into the structure. Control V again and I have enter offset. Okay. And once more and another offset which will be minus or plus 20 feet and we have quickly modeled our truss here. No? Loads and everything else um, stays the same. You know, we have here wind load and our snow load, which shows me that I forgot to enter some um, self-weight. There's another way how we can do this. There's a tool called uh, generate loads from area loads via plane. Um, we just enter the magnitude. We'll click the roof a surface roof area uh, will say okay please do not load my struts and I click okay and my load is applied yeah. maybe at the same time I would like to insert another 
coupling beam here in the middle, I can drag and drop it to here, drag and drop it to another place or yeah, actually I don't need it so I can select it and delete it. Um, lastly, finally I will do some bracing here, new bracing, uh, tension member, new cross section, round bar, round bar one, okay, okay, and I'll enter it from here to here. And again from here to here, from here to here, I can select control key and left mouse key pressed and you can drag and drop it from one end to the other. Same with this, control key, drag and drop here. No? Okay, finally to conclude it or make it somewhat look like a design, we go to the steel AIC module, select all members, select the LRFD combination, go to the cross sections, say optimize my cross sections and I use F8 to copy down from top to bottom and I can run the analysis and as a first attempt I get a first approach of the utilization ratio. Of course I didn't take care now of the uh, buckling lengths and uh, of all the lateral supports. Um, that can be done in that module but if you're interested in seeing how that works there's other webinars that can be found in our channel. So now we have uh, cross sections suggested and I can export all those cross sections back into the main model in RFAM and I have a short optimized model. Yeah. And this model now I'll send to back to Revit, import model, uh, remove can be saying, can be say the same, the loads, the result settings I'll disable now, that will be in the next model. I start the analysis, I start the export. RFM asked me, hey you have two models open, which model you want to use? I use the BIM model, I get my cross section converted and pretty soon those uh, cross sections should show up in, in Revit. The matching, the linking happens with um, unique identifiers, so we will um, we use unique IDs to identify which parts are new and which parts are not new and um, of course you have to obey certain rules when you are working with these exchanges because if you if you exchange or if you modify everything in in both uh, programs at the same time it's going to get hard to compare what is new and what is old. So there have to be some rules uh, that have to be obeyed but for example we have to, we have the, the join, joining of the slab and the isolated foundation stays the same. We only really write what is new there, we don't modify any other thing in the, in the Revit model. No? Okay this model at the same time we also said we would took a Tecla, I have your Tecla 2017 open. Uh, you can also send to Tecla, also direct interface, the buttons are here, direct export to Tecla, it works pretty much the same. Um, you have dialogue that allows you to update, to override um, the, the models, yeah. uh, you can mirror uh, the model if you want to because some axis may be different, C axis down up and we export it to Tecla and when we look at Tecla the model appears in Tecla. So the engineer who is familiar with Tecla right away has a good approach of my structure that I uh, would like to design and he can even, even so if it doesn't really work with this model he can look at it, he can double click on it, he can see okay this is the material, this is the thickness, um, this is this type of cross-section and it doesn't look, doesn't have to look at 
thousands of plans uh, to find out what's what's the deal. No? Also, um, you can compare models in Tecla as well. In Revit, there's also options or there's also tools how to compare different models. No? So we are open to all this, to this world. Okay, this was the second model. Now, next step, I'm going to go back to Revit. I'm closing this model. I am opening another model in in Revit, which is this time a concrete model. And the next step I'm going to show you is um, how we can run a a workflow. I close this model here. So I start in Scratch with RFM. I go to Revit. In this uh, file, I also have dead load low case, not extra load, but just dead load. And this time I use the export calculation import tool. I'll, it looks all the same. I'll create a new structure. I'll um, apply all the loads. And this time I'm importing the results. So this time I'm reading member results, for example, forces and surface results into the result explorer. Displacements and uh, basic forces, moments, shear forces, and so on. I could also, uh, if I have done a concrete design in RFM, I could also uh, export maps of required reinforcement, like um, required theoretical reinforcement. And then with this, we could then um, work in Tecla or in Revit uh, to to draw the to make the reinforcement detailing. Yeah? Okay. I'll start this workflow. Yeah? Now, the new model is created. It will be calculated, calculating model. When we go to our fan, you see the calculation is running. Yeah? And then after that, we'll, we'll import the deformations and the internal forces. Yeah? So, we're able to write into the Revit database a set of results. Yeah? And then you can show the results inside of Revit. For this, you must enable the imported categories. And um, I'll go, you have to have installed the structural analysis toolkit. And then this button's result explorer will show up. And we can then uh, control with this dialogue here which member which results I would like to see. You know? For example, a axial forces of the members. I apply and we'll get the axial forces here imported with the values. You know? Or at the same time I can say please show me the displacements. Apply and you get displacement color maps. You know? that you can show. Yeah? And this you can put on your drawings. Uh, you also have here a little scale so I understand what the colors are uh, for. Yeah? So this is a way how you can digitally transfer your calculation results into Revit and all the other applications who can read the result packages can actually um, look at this. Yeah? Um, Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, this was the workflow. Another thing that can be done is instead of exporting the entire model, I can export only a part of the model. I don't have to calculate 3D. Uh, for example, you can use a section box in Revit and you just eliminate everything beside a few sets of columns and one story. And you say, please export model, but now only visible objects yeah, into a new RFM structure. If I do this, I'll get a part of the model updated 
or written into a new ORFM file and I can work here with whatever I want. Yeah? Or if I want just a slab, I just select the slab and I have the slab. Yeah? So I can extract parts of models into sub-models into ORFM. Yeah? Again, um, this model we can send um, again to Revit, uh, to Tecla. Yeah? So here's this model and can uh, go from our fam and I export it to Tecla and I can either append so I can make a series of models into Tecla for visualization or I can override the existing model. Yeah. Okay, I override it writing the members and you will see yeah here the model is updated and again the engineer in Tecla can understand what he's doing. When we click on a on a element in Rev in Tecla and we acquire the part, then we also have additional information. For example, when there is result, we can see the axial compression, the bending moments. Uh, we have also reference to the material in global, the node, the member. So the member number is 22. So if I look at this at this column here, the column is here should be 22, member number 22. I can reference this information and put it on a drawing, for example, inside uh, Tecla. Okay, then finally, um, I'm going to import uh, a model from Tecla because in Tecla, things are very similar to what we've seen in, in Revit. Uh, I have a A model prepared that that has also an um, analytical model inside. Okay, and this model here is um, steel hull, and in Tecla it looks like this. There is an analysis and design menu, and here you can assign analysis and design models. And I have spent some work to do this. Um, as in as in Revit, there's also analytical members here and it has also information like start release, end release, you can set it up here. Um, you can also influence the position, whether it is on the reference axis, on top, bottom, uh, you have um, more, more options here. And um, in the properties of these analysis, analysis models, you can either uh, select selected model or you can uh, filter for example the full model you now creation will full model or select the parts only so you also have, have the possibility to export only certain parts and you choose the global.net or the global.net file if you want to get the file so .net is a direct interface once i have this I can grab this model into RFAM. This time I have to start the import from RFAM. RFAM talks to Tecla and we'll get the analytical model. If there would be rigid links, which are also possible in Tecla, they would be also imported and we'll import this Tecla model now. Tecla also has loads that we can import. Um, we also have enabled the basic loads, linear loads, nodal loads are possible. Um, here there were no loads, I create a simple load case. I have my supports here, I have my cross sections as you could see. Also the mapping is done with a so-called mapping file, detail setting, cross section mapping. If I look at it, you can see that uh, Mapping is possible from the application file name, application section name to the global name. Yeah. And those files can be set up. It's one time work depending on the set of sections you want to use. And then you have it um, in the software. Also, also the same is for material. Yeah? Okay. Um, let's see if we can run the analysis, if the model was correct. We can see also there are some hinges that have been assigned and you can see there has been some results, looks quite okay. 
and we can do some changes as well in uh, RFAM and update it to Tecla. Well, maybe I can also delete something. Delete, change a cross section, create a new one. Maybe let's make a big one. You can see, it, so we can see the difference. Um, yeah, like this. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And now I'll update my model in Tecla. Update existing model, click OK. OK, writing is almost done. So we look to Tecla and we'll see that there is all the changes are there. Yeah. Also note that connections we have designed in Tecla beforehand are not overwritten. Also foot um, footings, foot base plates, yeah. everything is then uh, sent to Tecla and the changes are applied, but things we don't want to change are not changed. Yeah. So, yes, the last thing I would like to show you is um, what we can do with IFC files. This first model I have imported or exported from Tecla to an IFC file. And in RFAM, we can reference this IFC file. For example, if you go to general data and you'll go to options, you can enable the so-called CAD BIM model. In this CAD BIM model, which creates a new a tab here, down here, you can load IFC or step files. Um, the IFC file that I'm needing is, uh, hang on, is in the Tecla structures models IFC out. I open it. And I'll get the IFC file on top of the real file. Yeah? The IFC file can be read here. You have columns. If you click on it, you can see all the details that are written in this column. See, they're swept solid, as I was explaining at the beginning. So when I go here, I can then um, hide or show individual um, parts. You know, I can say, please create a member from this IFC file. Create my native RFAM object. Now it's only geometry, it's only visualization. But in order to release the full intelligence, I need to convert it to a real member. You know? And I create this member and I can say, um, please, create it such way that uh, the reference line is in the center, on the top, on the bottom, whatever. Or I can create a surface or I can create a solid also from this. You know? I run OK, click OK, and I have my member here and the other column is, well no, the column was not, it was the, the beam. The beam is uh, disabled here, it's this one. Yeah? So it was a W6 by 15. Um, I can edit it, steel is clear, 6 by 15, but it wasn't translated. So I can manually just go ahead 6 by 15 and I can convert it. Yeah? So um, you can see that there is a little bit more work to, do, to be done in the IFC import. Or you can, of course, if you set up the IFC file correctly beforehand with the right naming and you are exporting um, um, application, then you don't have to manually assign the cross section, but you can you can import also an IFC file and work with this. And also because you see both models, you see what is the 
actually our fan model and what's the difference in the original model. Yeah? So you can see originally this beam was a little bit lower than it is in the RFAM model because we said the uh, uh, line is on top. Yeah? The insertion line is on top of the on the top flange. Okay. If I don't want to see the beam model, I exclude it. So latest thing I'm going to do is I'm exporting this. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm exporting this to Bentley ISM. Bentley has an ISM a file format or database that allows us to write into um, Bentley um, applications and all Bentley applications can read this uh, database. Yeah. So it's also that you want to say it's a direct, uh, uh, direct interface to this application. I click to a new uh, Bentley file and once it's written we'll have to go and check out my desktop. Uh, hang on. Desktop. And I have to start the ISM viewer that can be um, that can be shown. Hang on. I have to display the right screen. Okay. Screen. Only to two. Hang on, here we go. Uh, desktop and I'll open this one. Open. Yeah, and I see the file in the ISM viewer. I should have rotated yet uh, the model, which has not been done yet, but that's possible to set up because the ISM only knows uh, C-axis up. Yeah, but you have all the information also here. Um, I can click on it and read what is here and there should be somewhere um, the cross-section designation, material designation and ISM compatible software can actually read them also from this file. Okay, I think this is it from me. Time is almost over, I think, and I'm done with my presentation and I would like to ask Amy to take over and speak some final words. Thanks, we Walter. Yeah. So there was quite a bit of information today. Um, I always want to encourage everyone to visit our website, deluball.com, to find out more about RFM, our design add-on modules, and even more information on BIM integration. Um, we do have a lot of social media sites. For example, our YouTube channel has all of these previously recorded webinars that you can view at your pleasure. Our email here, if you do have any additional questions in our Philadelphia office, is info-us at deluwal.com. Again, info, I-N-F-O-U-S at deluwal.com. Our phone number here is 267-702-2815. We will have plenty more upcoming webinars. We try to do them about once a month. You can find them on our website at deluball.com under support and learning webinars. As most of you know as well, I try and send a couple of emails to remind you when those, those upcoming webinars will occur. Many of you are wanting PDH credit for today. That's great. The only request that I have is that you please send me an email with the people in attendance for today's webinar to info-us at deluval.com. Again, info, I-N-F-O-U-S at deluval.com. Um, once I receive that email, I will be happy to generate that certificate to you and email it back. And with that said, I want to thank everyone for attending today. And as always, we hope to see you at the next webinar.
Thank you.